with it, and then I didn't even put it on here. So inductive reasoning is when we look at patterns. Based on the pattern, we say it looks like this is coming next. All right? Very much used a lot. Also in math, and kind of what we're going to be going towards with our geometric proof, is we're going to talk about deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning uses facts, rules, definitions, or properties to reach logical conclusions from given statements. So it's not really based on a pattern, it's based on like rules and definitions and facts. And kind of in math, that's what we do a lot when we do our proof. We're going to use more deductive reasoning than inductive reasoning. So part of your homework today is just reading some examples and trying to think about, is it inductive? Is it using patterns? Or is it deductive? Is it using like rules and facts and properties to state that? And sometimes it can be a little confusing, but I'm going to just give you a minute to read these two if you haven't already. And it says, well, okay, I'll just be quiet and let you read it. Miguel, what do you think about Miguel? Do you think he's making his conjecture based on patterns, which is inductive, or you think he's basing it on facts and rules and properties, which is deductive? Inductive, it's a pattern, right? April has had the most rain for the past five years. Based on that pattern, he's going to say that it has uh, the most rain again. So we would say inductive. What about Sandra? Do you think she's using patterns or she's using rules and facts? Inductive or deductive? Unsure? Don't want to talk? <laughs> she learns that if it's cloudy at night, it will not be as cold in the morning than if there are no clouds at night. So, since it's cloudy tonight, she believes it will not be cold tomorrow. Yeah, because it's kind of based on a fact, more than she's, she's not saying, for the past five nights I've noticed this, so based on that I'm going to say this. She learned the fact that if it's cloudy at night, it won't be as cold as it, as it could be if there was no clouds at night. So based on a fact, that would make it deductive. Right. I only think I gave you like three of these on your homework because I don't know that it's that important to be able to tell between them. But we're going to be doing more deductive reasoning as in our proof than our inductive reasoning. Okay? So I think maybe, did you see somewhere in your uh, go formative that there was stuff for this lesson that I made? Maybe? Check for understanding. Let's see. Are those on, are those on the formative? Let's see. Yeah, I think this is it. Two four check for understanding. If you don't have, um, if you haven't signed up with my class and it's not under your assignments, I think you can get it with this code. T U Y T four nine four. Or even if you have signed up, if that's easier for you. Right? Oh, look, I even uh, wrote it there for you, right? That's the problem. So I just want to make sure there's Does anybody need the code again? Yeah. Two, four. <coughs> there we go. You just have to write inductive or deductive for those two, and then don't do the other one.
Deductive? Did you say deductive? Did you say deductive because the other one was inductive? Yeah, because it's based on like a rule of like the wall. Let me just say wall here. Um, the rule is that you get charged 25 cents per day. So based on that rule or that fact, it's a 75 cent fine. It's not really based on the pattern. So deductive. So kind of okay. Inductive, deductive. Did yours ever come up? Uh, okay, that's no. true. It's still not up. Or if you want, sign off and go get another one, and maybe we can get logged in and pull it up on that. But make sure you sign off. Did you sign off? Okay. Okay, so shut your Chromebooks for a minute. And again, I, I didn't put the little rectangles for you to fill in, but you need to know what this says, okay? And so I feel like you learn better when you write, but I don't want you to have to write everything, which is why I just fill in the blanks. And for some reason, I just did not do that on Friday, probably because it was Friday. And it was so um, but the law of detachment, okay? The law of detachment says if P implies Q is a true statement and P is true, then Q is true. That's kind of how we've been saying things, right? Like that's how we've been determining truth statements. So hopefully that makes sense. So it says if a car is out of gas, then it will not start. So if they say Sarah's car is out of gas, then we can conclude Sarah's car will not start. That just seems like common sense, right? But we can throw math stuff in there too. So it says determine whether the conclusion is valid based on the given information. If not, write invalid and explain your reasoning. So given, if a figure is a square, then it is a parallelogram. The figure is a parallelogram. Can we say the conclusion is the figure is a square? <laughs> so the law of detachment says if P is Q, then we can imply Q is also true. They told us the figure is a parallelogram. Is that P or is that Q? That's Q, right? So can we say that if it's a parallelogram, then it's also a square? Couldn't it just be a parallelogram? You see what I'm saying? So the trick here is this was the conclusion that they gave us. We can't say that that part's true. If they would have said the figure is a square, could we say the figure is a parallelogram? Yes, so just be really careful when you're reading these. So the answer here is this is invalid. Explain, you could explain using the law of detachment and you could say it's invalid because we can't assume the con that the hypothesis is true, is true just based on the conclusion. Or you could give me a real example here. If the figure is a parallelogram, then it could just be a parallelogram, or it could be not a square, right? So I don't know how you want to write that. You want to just write the, the counterexample? Any clue what I'm saying? You guys are very not confident today. Right, right, and that's what the book uh, gave us our explanation there. So, can't, you can say this, can't assume hypothesis is true based off conclusion. But we can say if the hypothesis is true, then the, Q, the, the conclusion is true. So I think... I have another check for understanding for you over this, I think. 
you imagine the Maya just eating on the chalkboard and having to write all this out with chalk every time? Somebody asked to play it. I didn't get it. Yeah. Uh, oh, look, it may be me, but I think I have it on your go for minutes if you want to uh, open it back up. And I'll just read it, and then you can don't yell out the answer. But it says, same rules. If a polygon is a convex quadrilateral, then the sum of the interior angles is 360. And it says the following is a true conditional. <laughs> uh, so they're telling us A, B, C, D is a convex qu quadrilateral. Can we conclude that the sum of the angles is 360? You say valid, not valid, can't be determined. No calculator or no calculator? Um, calculator. Grace, did yours come up? Yeah. Okay. Sometimes when they just run slow, I don't really know what's happening, but okay, I'm gonna go to live results. Have you voted? No. <laughs> so remember the law of attachment says if the hypothesis is true and they give you that, then the conclusion is true. That's what it says. How can you confuse and choose? Okay, how would you get your fault there? Uh I would flip that. then its sum is 360. And they're telling us it's a true conditional. So that's true. So if they give us this as the information, A, B, C, D is a convex quadrilateral, can we make the conclusion that its sum of its angles will be 360? Why is mine not Maybe you just voted. It's still thinking. Is it, is it loading the input? Probably, yes. It's just kind of slow today. But that is true. It kind of seems silly to say that we need to study this, that that's true. But it's true. If we know that if then statement's true, and they give us the if part, then we can conclude the then part. Yes? Yes. 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 Okay, shut this. Yes. Nope. We got more. Yes. No. Okay, this one may be a little bit more confusing, but I like that it's color coded here. If P implies Q is true and Q implies R are true statements, then we can say that P implies R is a true statement. And to me, it kind of makes sense because if Q is true based on P and then R is true based on Q, it's basically like you just take the Q out. And then P implies R is true. So it says, if you get a job, then you will earn money. If you earn money, then you will buy a car. So we can say, if you get a job, then you will buy a car. Because that conclusion is the same as that hypothesis. So basically they're giving you the end of the, so you're taking the hypothesis of the first one and the second one. And they're just to me, this is very messy if we just change it to letters. If I said, a equals B, and B equals C, right, then A has to equal C. Do you agree with that? Yeah. That's what that's saying, just in words, but that's using just like variables or letters. <laughs> well, that's just this statement. <laughs> All right, so look at this one. It says, let's, let's see if this one even works out now. If Jamal finishes his homework, he will go out with his friends. If Jamal goes out with his friends, then he will go to the movies. Oh yeah. One of those where it's like, if you have cable, then <laughs> your TV, your TV will. So does this work with this? Yeah. And then you have no signal. You will go out with others. You will go out with others. Right. He will go out with his friends as the conclusion. He goes out with his friends as the hypothesis. So since those are the same, can we put that if part with this then part? If he finishes his homework, he will go to the movies. Is that up here? When you rewrite it, do you not include a then? Because it only says if Jamal finishes his homework, and then it says he will. Right. Well, they just kind of left it out. 
you can put then or not then is also right. For some reason, they didn't put then in those. But, you know, and just remember, sometimes they write them without if and then. You have to kind of put them in there. So um, I would probably throw then in there because I like to say if, and then I like to say then. I like to emphasize those things. If tomorrow is Tuesday, then. It is not Monday. <laughs> okay. All right, I think I have another one. Do I have one more question on here for you? One of them is going to be Okay, so. Do you have to retype it in every time? Yeah. yeah. You have to type it in every day. But isn't it save it for you? Like, once you start yeah. typing? Yeah. Come on now. Mine does. <laughs> if your alarm clock goes off in the morning, then you will get out of bed. If you ride a bus, then you go to work. <laughs> what? We don't get paid to go to school. So look at the choices. Does this fit our wall over there? Yeah, I think we have to say D. We don't. We can't say because the then you will get out of bed. That has to be this part, but it's not, right? So if it doesn't follow the wall, we have to say there's no valid conclusion, All right? So if you feel like this doesn't make sense, that probably means the answer is there's no valid conclusion. Okay. It's D, right? Because really, those two statements have nothing to do with each other. Yes? Oh my gosh, what's my last question? I think you're going to have to say the last question. Oh, there you go. Answer the last question and then submit, and then you can sign up. Hey, I got it. My thing is like, it's alright. Just do the best you can if it doesn't work. So then you can sign up. And you can put them away. And oh my gosh, you actually have some time to work on your homework today. Can you see how much time it takes to do this? Because I don't know if you're going to have to follow it. But yes, I will. Mine is still spinning. Mine is still spinning. that you can ask me, all right?